Hi everyone, thanks for joining in. I'm excited to have Erica Ferenjic joining us. Um, Erica, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me, Jackie. This is wonderful. So um, there's you. nowhere on earth Erica won't go, take you out of your head and into the great wild world. An award-winning novelist, Erica writes adventure novels featuring women who brave not only internal struggles, but face extreme challenges in their environment, remote forests, steaming jungles, and desolated icescapes. To research the river at night into the jungle and her upcoming thriller Girl in Ice, which Scout Press, an imprint of Simon & Schuster, will publish, well, sorry, what has been published in March. Yep, has been. She ventured into the remote forests of the Alagas Territory in northern Maine, rafted the Amazon River in the jungles of Peru, and explored the desolate iceberg-packed fjords of Greenland. Um, I also, when I was reading your bio, I saw you have a Maine Coon cat. I have to say, I've just recently got a Maine Coon kitten myself. And aren't they? Oh, you're so lucky. You're so yeah. lucky. Aren't they wonderful? Her? her. They're so affectionate. They're a little crazy. Yeah. He may, he may come and join us. Oh, I hope, hope we he do get so to jealous. see him. He gets so jealous. <laughs> So may, he may join us and totally like photo bomb the whole. Thing, so. Oh well, I hope oh, that does great. happen. I'm a total animal lover. Um, so yeah. Girl and Ice is your latest book, and I have to say that I recently finished reading it, and as soon as I started reading it, I was um. It attracted me in and brought me in straight away, I think. I remember the opening, um, like talking about the girl on the ice, um, really, really brought me to wonder what happened and just draw me into yeah. reading it. It was really great. I don't know if I've had a book exactly do the same as what your book did with me when I, wow. like at the very, very start, yeah. So that right. was great. So that's wonderful to hear. Wondering if you want to tell us a bit about Girl and Ice. Sure. sure. So uh, just just quickly, Girl and Ice is about an American linguist named Val who is tasked to go to an extremely remote climate research station off the coast of Greenland where a girl has been found in a glacier. She's thought out alive and she's speaking a language no one understands. Eight months before the novel begins, Val's twin brother, Andy, who was a climate researcher up in this remote post, walks out middle of the night, polar night, 50 degrees below zero and freezes to death. Okay, so Val thinks he may have t taken his life, but she's not so sure. The story opens, however, when Val gets an email from Wyatt, Wyatt was one of the only other people up there uh, when Andy died, telling her about this girl, telling her, we found this girl, she thought out alive, I can't explain it, uh, and she is speaking a language no one understands, and you're the specialist in Nord and dead Nordic languages. Will you come up here and try to talk to this girl? Now, Val has her own problems. She has a pretty severe anxiety disorder of her own. She's only comfortable in a few places in her in her life, her home, her place of work. So her immediate answer is no. But then in the email, there's a little clip of the girl's speech, right? And so she plays that and doesn't understand a word. But what she hears is pain and she hears trauma and fear. And so Val decides right then she's going to go up and try to help because mm -hmm. linguistics for the first time in her life will actually help her be able to help a living human being. I mean, she's been dealing with mm -hmm. dead languages, you know, mm -hmm. uh, translating these, these, these ancient things and have, and ha does, hasn't had a lot of human interactions. So mm -hmm. That's a quick way of explaining it. Yeah, yeah, no, that's the, great. The story. Yeah. yeah. So I'm really interested to know, um, what was the first idea you had for this book? So I really enjoyed this 
writing this book because as I tell as I tell my students and other other writers, you know, the best thing to do is follow your fascinations. And I, um, I had a few for this book, but the real spark was I was walking behind my house. I live in the Northeast of the United States. It's very cold here in the winter, in the winter of 2017, I believe, or 2018, anyway. Uh, and there's a, there was a frozen pond and in the pond, there were three juvenile painted turtles and they were frozen mid stroke. Oh. And, <laughs> You know, they <laughs> they didn't look alive, but mm. they didn't look dead mm. either. So I ran home, Googled it, and it turns out there's all these creatures that can actually freeze and come back to life, not just torpor, actually, you know, dead, frozen. Mm. Uh, you know, certain wood, wood frogs, um, even alligators. Mm. Um, but these creatures possess a certain cryoprotein, which we do not possess in this cryoprotein protects the cells from damage. So think of it, you know, you have an ice cube in your drink, um, the the water has changed shape and it's nice and sh it's, it's sharp, so it will break through the cells. But we do not, as humans, possess cryoprotein. So in any case, I had this vision of a girl frozen in a glacier and I could just see the side of her foot and she was running from something. So my job was, who is this girl? What is she running mm. from? What's her story? Uh, and I had to think back, back and back from that. And is to... linguistic something that you had had much to do with before or? Nothing. No, oh, no. Okay. I mean, I, I love language, obviously, and I love science. Mm. Um, I think that, so I had to, make up her language. I had to make up mm. this girl's language. And the way I did that is I, I listened to it needed it needs to it needed to sound Nordic, but not be, you know, Finnish or Greenlandic or Icelandic. Mm. You just have that ring, you know? So I listened uh, to many, many hours of Icelandic, Greenlandic, Finnish, Danish, Norwegian to try to create my own language um, for the girl to make it sound real. And it's also a unique language in another way, but that would be a spoiler. So I can't mm, say, mm, <laughs> right? Yeah. I'm so bad at spoilers. I'm like, <laughs> people are like, stop it, Erica. <laughs> <So. laughs> yeah, we, anyway. yeah, we don't want to give away any spoilers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So. And um, you visited quite a few places for research for this book. Is that right? Do you want to tell well, us a bit know, about that? Mainly Greenland. Uh, I went to Greenland uh, mid-August of 2019 to mid-September 2019. Mm. Very lucky, right? Mm. To do that then. Uh, and I mean, I don't know how many people watching have been there to Greenland, but it is one of the few places on earth that still retains its sense of mystery mm -hmm. because it hasn't been ruined yet, you know, by, by human beings. Um, it is, it is, it is incredibly massive. It is a third the size of Canada. Uh, the ice sheet is second only to Antarctica. It is 1500 miles north to south. This is just the ice sheet, mm -hmm. 700 miles east to west and two miles deep at its thickest mm. and it's surrounded by mountains that just jut up out of the sea. So um, it is, it's pretty forbidding. And, the, and another thing is that only 56,000 people live there. Mm. I think of your town, I don't know how many people live in your town, people out there, but I live in Framingham, we have 77,000 people. Mm. So think of that number of people spread out over this massive landmass. And also it is a hunting and subsistence culture, which is one thing to read about and another to witness. Yeah. That's your meals come from your fishing, mm. from the luck or, or bad luck of your hunting day. Mm. Um, so, and, and Greenland is extremely, they're not that far from prehistory. As recently as 1950, there were significant numbers of people who had never had any contact with the outside yeah. world. 
mm, pretty amazing. So, mm. um, and just not that, that, but also just, just the sense of scale, which is, you know, when I, you look at it on the screen, you don't get it. You go there and you, and, and it's, um, it's absolutely stunning. Yeah, um, must have been pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, it must have been pretty amazing getting to go there. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Have you been there? No, no. Uh, someday, no. maybe yeah. Iceland. Yeah, Iceland's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've like Girl on Ice is the first book of yours that I've read. But can you tell us are your other books you've written um, in exotic or extreme locations like Girl on Ice? Yeah, I mean, my first book uh, is called The River at Night. That came out in 2017. That is about four women, four friends, who go whitewater rafting in northern Maine and in the Allagash Territory. Now, so people who people don't know, the Allagash Territory in northern Maine is extremely uh, very unpopulated. Very, 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 very few people live there. It's this massive swath of forest. Mm. So the four women go whitewater rafting the nor in uh, the Allagash Territory. They lose the raft and they have to survive not only the wilderness, but a mother and son who have disappeared, the who have disappeared themselves for their own tragic reasons. So, I mean, I, I had to deal with, you know, a lot of my own fear going mm. into these situations. And each time I did, it was a sort of a new negotiation with myself. I was nervous to go into the Allagash chair. I needed to interview people who live off the grid mm. and they were mostly single men. Okay. Mm. So I mean, I was a little nervous. I'm sure you found some, and you must've found some interesting people. <laughs> oh yeah, but I could right away. I mean, it was very just finding them. I I yeah. called all the chambers of commerce right up through uh, through Canada, the uh, south of Canada, just trying to find people to interview. I found them. Um, I vetted them because you know I didn't want to die. Or yeah, anything. it could and, have been a bit a bit um, scary. <laughs> and I put off, I put off the trip for so long that I ended mm. up going in the winter, which is like the worst. Mm. <laughs> So, um, but I ended up meeting incredible people who had unique reasons for disappearing themselves mm. and for doing what they were doing. Uh, and once I got them talking, they didn't stop. Mm. And I mean, I ended up staying in like a, a boat on land, on a, in, a, in a bus, uh, all these strange places. So that was that. The second book is called Into the Jungle. And that is about a young woman, American, very, very young woman, uh, who goes to Bol Bolivia, falls in love with a Bolivian man, and follows him into his follows him to his remote jungle village, where she has to survive. This is based on a true story. A friend of mine actually experienced much of this book, mm. but again, I wanted to go down and experience it. And again, I read everything I could get my hands on, which scared the pants off of me. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> to go into, I ended up going to the Peruvian Amazon and I spent, I spent a month there. And I really literally came out a different person than I went in. Mm. Uh, so, so that was, that was quite the experience. Mm. And so, but I don't do these things to, you know, for the frequent flyers. I do these. <laughs> I, you know what I mean? I'm not, it's not a travel, none of these books are a travel guide. The story comes first. You read the book, you know, that's about the story. It's not about, well, it's, of course it's about Greenland and it's about that, yeah. that yeah. setting. But, you know, you're concerned about the girl, right? Mm. You're concerned. Yeah, about... I think the characters stood out a lot more than the actual location for me. Right, yeah. right. And so, yeah. I mean, um, so I'm very, very conscious. I mean, I people have asked me, so you go to Greenland and think of a story. No, that mm. I don't have that luxury. You know, mm. um, I think of the story first. I actually write an entire first draft mm. and then I go mm. because otherwise. I don't know what I'm looking for. I don't know yeah. who to interview. Mm. What do I ask them? Mm. 
what does it have to do with the with the book mm. um, the world is too big and beautiful and confusing you know it's like <laughs> uh, i would be all over the place yeah so i am yeah. anyway but this yeah. helps me you know. and can you tell me what are, what are you working on at the moment i can't really talk too much about it um but it's a, another thriller um, involving the environment, mm -hmm. and it's called The Intelligence. Um, basic, and in it, uh, nature turns on us. Mm -hmm. And that's really all I can say right now. I can't go too deeply yeah. into it. And are you only just that. starting on that at the moment? If you only... Well, I have an outline, and I did the trip. I just... You know, it's so funny. This this launch for this book has been so all encompassing. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, that I have stopped working on that in December, and I need to start up in uh, in no, May. I'll be able yeah. to start up again. Yeah. But, um, yeah. No, well, I after reading after reading Girl and Ice, I'll be interested to read more of your books now. Oh, good, good. I'm glad mm -hmm. to hear that. Yeah. Thank you. And could you tell us a bit about um, how you became a writer? Is it something that you'd always thought you'd get into? Well, I started out, uh, I was a fine artist. I was a painter. Mm. Until I was 26 years old, I had shows. I was really into it. Um, and I literally woke up one day and decided I wanted to be a writer no more interested in canvas and paints. Mm. I think it's because I had done some writing before, but I think it's because I read something. Don't ask me what it was. I can't remember, but something that, you know, how it just touched me so much and reached me. And I thought that, and I thought that's what I want to do. You know, that's how I want to reach people. And from that was a, was a, you know, 35 year journey mm. <laughs> to actually become published because mm. I wrote really bad novels, mm. didn't know what I was doing. Um, I was a bit stubborn about learning. I don't know why. Um, got my master's, wrote another bad novel. Did you start off with thrillers or something else? I, I wrote, I, I wrote a I wrote a comedic novel. Okay. I mm. wrote a supernatural thriller. Mm. Um, I wrote some, yeah, I, I just wrote some, some just drama that just, the problem was I was stubborn about learning structure. I was stubborn about learning mm. really how to write. I was, I thought that I was funny and I thought I could just write this entertaining stuff with that, but I didn't have structure. So I, I was funny. So I actually did stand up for 10 years. Uh, and I wrote sketch comedy and that was a way of instant publication. You know what I mean? Mm. Like right away, mm. like, you mm. know, you're not funny. You, know, you're, <laughs> you're, you're, you, you get this feedback, but it taught me, it taught me teach me structure. It taught me discipline. It taught me to be prolific. You're constantly having to write jokes mm. and, uh, to deal with rejection. Mm. The deal was just the reality of, of dealing with other human minds and their reactions to my ideas. Mm. So that was that. From there, I went to, uh, I'm old, so I have all these decades of things that I do. <laughs> so I was, there, was, there was a decade of screenwriting. I wrote a dozen screenplays. Mm. I, I was the director of development for a film company. I, I read a thousand screenplays. And I think that's when I started to stubbornly see, oh, I guess I need some structure. Um, so I really started to study and at the same time decided I was, did not even want to be a screenwriter. I'm not collaborative. Mm. I wanted to go back. So then I went back to writing novels. And I think I wrote, I self-published three. Then I finally wrote something that I'd like to describe it when I talk to writers. Um, I wrote something that was the intersection between what I could do as a writer and what the marketplace wanted. Want. Yeah. There is mm. that sweet spot. And it took me a really, I hope it doesn't take others that long, but it took me a really long time to, to reach that. Mm -hmm. And it's persistence. It's just never giving up. It's also learning, you know, you, it was important that I, that I was able to say, oh, okay. So, you know, I can make this better yeah. instead of saying, yeah, this is it, take <laughs> it or leave it. It's really yeah. important. You know what I mean? It's, um, 
because it's hard and it's tiring and you're proud of your work and you, but um it's about the reader it's like how how are you enjoying the book jackie are you enjoying the book? Mm. is this sort of it's my gift to the world and i want it to be a nice gift mm. yeah and it's not about me you mm. know what i mean mm. so yeah, no, that's really interesting what you've said. Mm. So, um, I that's how I, I guess I've always been a writer, but, you know, I've had all kinds of crazy jobs, you know. Uh, I've been in construction. I was a waitress. I was a realtor. I worked in publishing, kind of lower echelons, um, uh, all kinds of things. Mm. But I, well, I did it all so that I could write. Because mm. mm. I knew that I have had full-time jobs. And when I've had full-time jobs, especially with commutes, too tired. Yeah. I haven't been able to do mm. it. Mm. You know what I mean? The commute. Um, so I've had to build my life around what I'm trying to find time to write. Yeah. yeah. And it's hard. It's hard <laughs> because, you know, you have a family and you're yeah. like, you constantly have to, t I mean, I took a while for my husband to understand I need to be alone mm, in a quiet place. Be, yeah. oh. mm. He's like, why? <laughs> he knows now, <laughs> 27 years later. <laughs> but, you know, it's, 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 um, yeah. Yeah. It takes time. Mm. It takes so much time. Mm. It's worth it, though. Yeah. It, yeah. And especially, I'm sure when you hit, get feedback from readers and, Mm. yeah feedback yeah that's um well there's feedback and then there's reviews that's a whole other yeah bag of wax you mm. know mm. you have to be a little bit stalwart you know i don't i don't read my reviews because the good ones make me happy sure but then the bad ones you know it's it's just an emotional roller coaster and you can't please everyone anyway you can't i mean but that's a big lesson to learn mm -hmm. uh, i wrote this piece called 11, 11 lessons from 35 years of, of writing and one of them is not everyone is going to love you exactly you know mm -hmm. and you, but but it's in, and you and of course you know that we're all grown up we're all intelligent mm -hmm. we all know that but to to, you still, you really probably still want to, to, yeah, you still you want everyone whacked. to love it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just feel like, well, you know, maybe this time everyone will love me. Mm. Oh, I guess not. You know mm. what I mean? It's very weird. Yeah. It's very weird. Mm. And what about reading yourself? What sort of things do you like reading? And just wondering if there's anything you want to recommend to us. Oh, okay, so um, I love, I love, I read across all, that's not true, uh, not all spectrum. I love thrillers. I've just, mm. I just love really, really, really good books. Um, and I mix it up, fiction, nonfiction. I, I'm a little leery of reading certain books when I'm trying to write a certain book. Um, so I have to be careful. But some recommendations. Um, the Push. By oh Audrey. yes, this has been out yeah. Have you read, read that? that? Yeah, that's a good. Oh one. my God, the push yeah. by Audrey O'Drain, mm -hmm. which is sort of a retelling of the bad seed, you know, the mm -hmm. evil child. I was when I first read about it, I was like, oh no, not another one of those. <laughs> oh my God, what a book, right? Yeah, no, it's a great so, one. Such a great book. Um, the, this is an older one, but The North Water by Ian McGuire. Have you okay, read that? No. You would love that. That mm -hmm. is sort of Moby Dick, the real story. Um, I'm looking so a little bit of more of an obscure one, Into the Distance by Hernan, H-E-R-N-A-N, Diaz, D-I-A-Z. I don't think he's going to be too obscure for long. His next book's coming out and he's pretty beloved. Mm. Um, there's some older ones, just old favorites. The Woman Upstairs by Claire Massoud. Have you read that? No, no. It's fabulous. Um, let's see. The Need by Helen Phillips was fabulous. Um, Enduring Love. Well, Ian McEwen is so prolific, but Enduring mm. Love, Story of Obsession. And I really loved his Machines Like Me about um, someone buys basically a robot and um, 
things happen. Uh, machines like me, that's what it's called. So those are kind of some favorites. Um, did I say the need by Helen Phillips? I think I yeah, did. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, and that... what am I, what am I reading? Oh God. I'm always reading 20 books at once. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, that they're, they're good recommendations. Thanks. We always love getting recommendations. Sure, yeah. Could you tell us where you like to write? Have you got a favorite place? Well, you know, it's so funny. It's like I am so jealous of my writer friends that can go into a Starbucks and sit there yeah. and be among people and write their book and like I I'm the princess in the pea. <laughs> You know, I need total silence um, and I need a lot of time mm. because it just, I'm a slow reader and I'm a slow writer. I work in a shed. It's nice shed. <laughs> it's a rehab, but it's a shed. And it was funny. I was, I kept trying to go to libraries because uh, I have to get out of my house. I just can't work in my house. But libraries have certain hours, and then you can get the study room for just two hours. Yeah. But it just takes me an hour just to calm down, you mm. know. Um, and I got so sick of being kicked out and all this stuff. And I said, okay. So one day I was walking by, part of our shed is built into the house. I said, oh, my God, that shed that has our lawnmower in it has a window. What's <laughs> up with that? Why don't we just? And so began the project of cleaning it out and being a little heater in there mm. um, and a little desk. And there I am out in my mm. shed. So, you know, talking to you and all this, this is the sexy part, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's not the two years of being in a shed. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, it's, it's very workmanlike. I mean, I'm a, I'm a solid second shifter. I like working from like two to nine, mm, okay. five or six days a week. Yeah. I bring my dinner in there. Um, and I like working at night. Darkness helps me. Mm -hmm. You know, daytime is too distracting. Um, plus, I have you know other things to do. Mm. Life things. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, like life things. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's that's when I prefer it. Yeah. And yeah. any tips for new writers? Tips for new writers. Um, God, you know, I. I would say, um, I would say it's really important to love yourself at every stage of being a writer. And by that, I mean, you're going to be a different writer in your twenties, in your thirties, in your forties and fifties and beyond. And I know that I was very hard on myself as a young writer because I wasn't, you know, I didn't feel successful, which is a bitchy word. I hate that word. I hate the word success because writing is an incredibly complex pursuit, especially novels. And it takes years and years to, for most people, to get a handle on it. Uh, so I would say, you know, if I had defined success as being a published writer, even 10 years into it, mm. I would have given up. Mm. It would have given up. Mm. So now, I mean, I define success as, okay, did I, you know, did you, did you make a, a deadline on a contest? Did you write, did you figure out how to write maybe a dialogue, do a better job with your dialogue? Did you, write a great chapter today or even a great paragraph, mm. you know, mm. and just be kind to yourself and live your life because that's where your work comes from. Mm. That's where your juice comes from living your life. Yeah. It's not some mystical thing. Mm. Uh, so you're allowed to live your life and you're allowed to write and you're, and who knows what you're writing now may not work, but elements of it will probably come back into your later work in ways that are maybe more useful for you. Mm. So never give up. Never, never, never mm. be persistent, but, but, but learn. There's a lot to learn. And, and, but if you're getting criticism and, and you feel like it's wrong, it is okay. 
to say no to it. It is okay because you've got to hold on to that little kernel inside. Yeah. That knows, you know, that 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 sort of is what got you in trouble in the first place. <laughs> but it's this kryptonite hard piece of you that knows that you have something to offer as a writer. So as long as you have that, mm. no one can destroy you. Nothing can destroy you. And you, you just go on with your life, but writing is a lifelong pursuit and joy. And, um, you know, mm. so that's what I want to say. Just never give up. I mean, literally it took me, I'm 63. It took me, I, I was 26 when I got serious. And my first book was published. I was nearly 58. Yeah. Now, don't be discouraged. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it won't take, you know, uh, but, but, um, and of course, and I did a million other things, you mm. know, I had a family, I had jobs, I don't, but, um, so can you share with us though, what made you not give up? Do you think? Um, I think part of it was all the bad books I was reading. Yeah. I mean, how the hell did they, I mean, I can do better than this. Yeah. Mm. That was part of it, but also feeling like um, just that I had something to say that wasn't, you know, the best thing anyone ever said, but it would add to just the world of, mm. of books as we have them. You know, mm. it's a big, big, complicated world with billions and millions of readers with taste for anything you can imagine. Yeah. So, mm. you know, you're going to find your readership. Mm. It's, it's, you know, you will find them over mm. time. And if you believe in what you have to say, you just can never give up. And also, it's really important. It, it, it is a marathon, not a sprint. Mm. So you have to love to run. You know what I mean? If you're not enjoying it, then I would think about maybe not doing it because it is a lot, it is a lot of time mm. out of your life. You know, I miss things. I've missed celebrations and all kinds of things because, you know, I'm devoted, you know, mm. so you have to, you know, and I would also say, if you really want to do it, schedule it into your life, mm. Mike, make time. it a part yeah. of your schedule. Don't mm. just say at the end of the day, when I'm so tired, I can't even see that's when I'll write, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, that, don't set yourself up for failure you know, mm. because I know what that's like too, you know, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm a good at that, mm. right. uh, but make it respect it, respect, respect it enough to say, all right, I'm going to write from, you know, eight to 10 in the morning or whatever it is, you sit your ass down, shut yourself off and do it mm. because, it, and, and you'd be amazed how it builds up. Mm because the next day you have something mm. to start and you're sort of, you know, leapfrogging from day to day with what you have. Mm. So it's, it's, it's very possible. And there's a nice community. I'm sure there's a community <laughs> where you are yeah. of writers, right? Yeah. Same as there's lots of really good writing communities around. Sure. Very supportive. And, and find mm. one, you know, find one that you, mm. you know, you kind of resonate with. Um, you know, I don't so much do that anymore because just because it takes time, mm. you know, it takes time away from what I have to do, mm. but, um, yeah, sure. I mean, I have my own, I shouldn't say that. I mean, of course I have my own writing community, <laughs> but not as, not as much as I did in, in early days, mm. earlier mm. days. So, mm. well, thanks yeah. so much for sharing that. That was really great. Sure. Thanks. Sure. Sure. And thanks Any so questions? much. Just get in touch with me. Anybody who has a question <laughs> yeah. or can help. Uh, yeah, I was going to you. ask you, how do people get in touch with you? Um, let's see. So you can go to my website, which is just my name, mm -hmm. ericaforensic.com. Very easy. E-R-I-C-A. Last name, F is in Frank, E-R-E-N is in Nancy, C-I-K.com. And there's a contact form. Just say, hey, I had a question. <laughs> and it should come to me. Thank you. Okay. Thank it's super easy. Yeah, thanks so yeah. much for Plus joining on us. All the socials, you know, <laughs> the social stuff. Yeah. No, it's been great yeah. chatting to you. And as I said at the start, I really loved Girl and Ice. So looking thanks. forward to reading more of your books. And who knows, maybe we can talk again when you have your next book out. Absolutely. Two years. 
See you in two years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sounds good. Thank you. Sounds Bye, good. everybody. Thank you. Bye.